Peace and love, peace and love. Let me just first and say thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. This is the Brother Garfi Podcast. You could follow me on Instagram, Brother Garfi Podcast. On Twitter, it's um, Brother Garfield or Bro Garfield. On um, TikTok, it's Brother Gar- Axe Brother Garfield 55. And uh, my email is axebrothergarfield at gmail.com. All right. Sister Dr. Mayat is coming up real soon. But before I do that, I got to introduce her to the world and so that we've been tackling this for years with this, with folks all over the community. This is nothing new. This is not her coming up with something recent. She has been beating up on folks for years with this information. In order to be certified, you must be verified by someone who is qualified i'm gonna say that again brother Sai. in order to be certified you must be verified by someone who is qualified if we were to do a comparative study of monotheistic religions today in retrospect to ancient civilizations we'd be able to definitively conclude that just about all these people of all their different ideological beliefs and constructs were encountered by relatively the same beings. And they interpreted their encounters with these beings based on the best level of understanding that they had at that particular day and time. But if we were to do a comparative study of all these religions, we would come to find that globally, they were encountered by the similar or the same species. You have people that are uh, in the community uh, who say they, they are upset with the Armin Ross squad because we believe in modern, we believe in evolution, and we uh, we agree with modern science. Now, they need to understand that mathematics and science is African spirituality because what our ancestors did was study nature and science is just a systematic study of the physical and natural world that's what science is and mathematics is the language of science it's the language of nature so when you study mathematics and study science you are practicing african spirituality so for people who say that they don't study math or that's the white man's science or that's the white man's math we gave science and mathematics to the world how come the pyramids that all the conscious community people are uh, 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 credit for that they built build up for the celestial prototype? You can't deny that. How can you line up the three pyramids of Giza with the Orion star concept? How is that? Why is that? They may say someone was taken by a cloud. Well, that may have been relative speech or jargon for that day and time. But in this day and time, the religious need an upgrade. So a cloud would have to be a ship. But in that day and time, they would express what they bear witness to based on their level of understanding. So, Brother Side, today I'm, I'm trying to really put an end to the foolery that uh, aliens built the pyramids. Um, it's been, I mean, of course, New Age science will say that... Uh, Aliens came down and gave them, these people, you know, the knowledge to uh, build these monuments or that aliens came down and uh, picked up the two ton blocks for them um, and that they had no, they didn't have the sophistication um, to, to build these monuments or to align them with the stars. Our ancestors did have um, the knowledge to, um, or the ability to align the pyramids with whatever they wanted to align it with. Uh, they did have the knowledge or the ability to move two ton blocks because they understood math and they understood physics. And that's all it took, physics, math, and astronomical science and observation in order to align uh, the pyramids. Some of these doctrines were tailor-made for a specific species, right. so only they will respond to this information. Right. Well, I'm going to contend first and foremost that that what you call the melanated species on this planet, uh, because I have a priority interest in them in this particular moment, that they have spiritual parents. When I say spiritual, I don't mean spooky spiritual. I'm saying that what you call extraterrestrials is not simply limited to the physical shell. 
when you say extraterrestrial, let's break down what extraterrestrial is. Because sometimes you can have a spooky outlook if you understand only semantics and not understanding the understanding behind what it means. Well, what it means? What is a terrestrial? It's something that exists on the planet. You're a terrestrial. An extraterrestrial meaning something that is not native to this plane of existence called Earth that is here now. I'm going to teach you this. Extraterrestrial means something extra that is not here, that is not naturally from here. There's a lot of that here. I will contend that just about all these different religions primarily have the same source, which is the extraterrestrial experience. They were all having a hard time trying to explain what they encountered. Are you also talking about a creature, a living creature that's on this planet that don't look like us? Yes. Why not? When I stand up and talk about extraterrestrials and their influence and their intervention and the creation of men, I represent the whole community at the time. Whether they like it or not, I am your representative. You should have gone somewhere else in my place, but I'm here today. Um, so, when I talk about the extraterrestrial experience, I can give you a whole lot more information than your uh, average black power brother or sister that just uses the whole continent. You understand what I'm saying? Now we get into some spooky oh. shit. Oh no, it's not spooky. Why is it spooky? Now I'm gonna explain this. Go ahead. I'm gonna explain this. You know what's spooky? What? Where we all say, I'm from Africa, right? This is what we do in the black continent. I'm from Africa, right? This is what we say all the time. Then when you ask what part of Africa, everybody go blank. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That shit's spooky. Extraterrestrial doesn't necessarily have to be an entity. Okay, a human or a human-like entity or biological entity. An extraterrestrial can be a meteorite, okay? It's an asteroid outside of the planet, it becomes a meteor inside of the planet. When it comes into the planet, by definition, scientifically speaking, anything that comes from outside the planet that comes into the confines of this planet is extraterrestrial. Your brother don't understand that this works to the benefit of an elite group of contrabandists that's on the- Archaeologists have found uh that's on this planet. And this is where All right, before I bring the sister on, um, she had asked me to play this video. I didn't realize which video it was, but I came back and it's all over the screen. But um, let me just say that Dr. Mayat will be in the building at six, approximately 6 p.m., maybe a little bit earlier. But I do want to say that <clears throat> the pyramid builders, as far as what I'm, I'm concerned about, is the fact that we would fight we would fight for Egypt and then at the same time give extraterrestrials or, or other outside of, outside of Earth, give them the credit instead of the people who are the native Egyptians. That's kind of weird to me. So if you're saying you're so proud, you're connecting Africa and Africa and the greatness of Kemet and Egypt and all that stuff, but well, yet still you go big up Kemet, but, and then take away the power from them to build pyramids. If they're so smart and intelligent, why couldn't they build the pyramids? Why it has to be some outside force? You don't realize you're giving a shot at the people who actually did the pyramids, who documented what they did. But anyway, let me go back to this video. archaeologists have found uh, the oldest evidence of symbolic thought. Not only did they find oldest evidence of symbolic thought, but they also found the oldest evidence of a mathematical thought, which um, which corroborates my claim that uh, that uh, these ideas uh, were born in South Africa and they reached Central Africa first and eventually, eventually uh, culminated in Kemet, allowing um, our ancestors to build the great structures uh, like the pyramids and the Sphinx. Fear. In fear that people actually wake up and bear witness to these truths, we'll be able to get out of the situation we're in. We are the offspring of that which they call God, which in truth is what we would say today is an extraterrestrial. How could they have done this? And we've and we seen they recorded everything on the walls. 
but we can't find the technology where they was able to do these things. You can be impressed by a higher consciousness that is not limited to the physical shape. If you don't make it, you run a faggot operation, you're a piece of shit. You are a demon against black people. You work for the CIA and the National Security Agency with your wicked smiles. And I'm not being polite about it. How in the fuck are you a young Pino? You're a piece of shit. And that's an insult to every piece of shit that ever was shitted on the planet. How in the fuck are you going to say that the white man is over here, nigga? You're no. over here. I ain't polite, yo. No. I ain't polite. Well, I ain't polite, too. I ain't polite. Come over here. Leave that nigga alone. Tell me no start no shit. Bitch ass nigga. All of you a bitch ass nigga. Bitch ass nigga. All of you a bitch ass nigga. If, you, if your children couldn't get themselves together to get themselves out of a situation that they potentially put themselves in, why should your parents come and age you? You see what I'm saying? Structures, um, how, how they... Uh, have something or someone that they adhere to. It's no spookery, you know, as to how they uh, built the pyramids, how they um, maneuvered uh, granular uh, structures. Um, how they aligned things with the true north or aligned them with whatever star they were targeting is no spookism. You know, it wasn't an alien that did it. Um, they had a system, you know, they had a methodology as to how they did things and they implemented it. And that's what allowed them to maneuver granular structures, to align things uh, with the true north. Um, to, to produce mathematical papyri. So I just want our brothers and sisters to be armed with this information when someone approaches them and say, oh no, the aliens did it, or no, the, the Arabs did it, or the uh, Hebrews did it. I want our brothers and sisters to say, no, 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 that we know exactly how uh, they built the pyramids. We know exactly how uh, they were aligned, and we know exactly how uh, they moved these uh, granular structures. Extraterrestrials. It is my personal conviction that extraterrestrials have played more than an exponential role in the creation of human beings, point blank period. It is also my personal conviction that extraterrestrials play more than an exponential role in giving us information to build our ancient civilizations. It is also my personal conviction that these same extraterrestrials and in in some new additions are still participating in society today. It is my conviction that they have interceded when human beings was about to completely destroy this whole planet. So you all understand that this works to the benefit of an elite group of contrabandists that's on this planet that make an expense at the hell of everybody else's uh, plagues. That's why nobody wants us to get to the extraterrestrial reality. It is better off to study something you can't uh, relate to or engage. Extraterrestrials. <clears throat> I would break the word up into extraterrestrial, but I'm always going to go to the dictionary first. But it's in the word extra additional amount terror being uh, earth and Latin and astral from the start. Something additional. Ton of uh, blocks. In an intense fashion, one of several things is going to take place. Okay? One is that you're going to establish levity. That's a lie. So I'm getting ready to get into the building methods of Kemet and how they actually moved these two ton blocks or these 10 ton uh, blocks. So I'm going to be interested to see how would he possibly debunk the possibility or the actualities that correspond with the influence of beings of supernatural or superior uh, elements that exist outside the context of this particular planet Earth. So the mathematical foundations of the structures attest that its creators had a working knowledge of algebra, geometry, geometry, trigonometry, astronomical science, because they aligned these monuments with uh, celestial bodies, mechanics, material science, and physics. Now I'm getting ready to touch on the mechanics, material science, and physics, because they had to understand mechanics, material science, and physics in order to um, create a ramp system that would... Um, maneuver these two ton blocks. Extraterrestrials are responsible for our creation. Extraterrestrials have educated mankind 
and extraterrestrials are responsible. But that's a lie, family. So now I'm getting ready to get into the building methods of Kemet and how they actually, um, how did they build these structures? Because again, Brother Sai, there's a lot of misinformation out there regarding this. People say that um, the aliens did it, uh, that, they, that they weren't equipped to move two ton, two -ton blocks. Um, when you I, talk about the, um, when you talk about the extraterrestrials, are uh, you saying that, um, I want you to describe these Oh, no, I'm um, archaeologists and scientists an idea as to how they um, how they maneuvered uh, heavy materials. This paper is written in the physical uh, physical physical review letters entitled "Sliding Friction on Wet and Dry Sand." I'm going to show you that it is evident that. Beings of higher intelligence from other planets. Paper. It states they did an excavation on a pyramid from 1900 BCE. And guess what they found by the side on the pyramid? The names of the pyramid builders written in red ochre. So they found the names of the pyramid builders. So we can't say, Brother Sai, anymore that the aliens came to build the pyramids. Because if the aliens came to build the pyramids, would they have put their names in red ochre? Right, right. Okay. They look like me. Okay. So I'm going to build just like me. I'm at your question. That's going to be a difficult thing to disprove. And what these authors did, this is a very, very powerful paper. Uh, anyone who is interested in understanding how the Egyptians moved these two-ton blocks should get this paper. It's again published in the physical review letters. Uh, the hey, I just heard that um, the brother um, Panic Pass. Let me just um, put something up from his um, the YouTube that he be on. Just in respect, I don't agree with Brother Panic. I thought he was one of the main pseudos around, in my opinion. He dealt with the occult sciences. But let me see what they talked about for a few minutes. Just in honor of Brother Panic, he was a part of the community, so I don't want to even violate him while he's not alive. But just give give him, um, it's, we got a couple more minutes before Dr. Mayat come on, but um, bear with me a second while I play this. Okay, family? When we come today with some... A little bit sad news. Um, my king, my husband, my God, Brother Panic, he's crossed over. So we sit and chill here tonight celebrating a beautiful brother. Some knew him as Panic. Some knew him as Brother Panic. Some knew him as an author, a lecturer, a producer, an occultist, a grandmaster a grandmaster teacher. To me, he was also my baby, my great love, my best friend, my companion, my old man, my husband, my soulmate. Brother Panic, how do you describe him? <laughs> this is a man that when he spoke, he changed the lives so many. I will do my best tonight to describe such a great man. The best word to describe him is brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. All right, y'all. I'll do my best to uh, describe a great man. The best word to describe Brother Panic is uh, his brilliance. Such brilliance in his teaching, brilliance in his delivery. Brilliance and how he could take a complex topic or subject and break it down in parts that made it so much easier for people to understand. So we honor my brother, my my man, my God, my king, brother Panic, as we all celebrate with y'all and now reach out to y'all and let you know that he's, he transitioned without no foul play. He transitioned, there's no agents involved, there's no CIA, no Illuminati, no FBI. The portal started to open for him, we saw it. He transitioned, he passed through, no foul play. So we can all have a lot of peace of mind with that. And uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> you know, it was uh, the first time I talked to Penny. We uh, we talked on the phone for like nine hours, and <laughs> it was from like <laughs> nine p.m., ten p.m. to like six in the morning, and you know we immediately became family. You know, what I mean, and everybody with us, you yes. know. Um, has treated me like family. And you know, they always say, it's a family you're born with and a family you choose. Mm. And yeah. you know, when whenever you connect with somebody like that, instantly, you know, that, that speaks volumes, man. Like it speaks, uh, that's that's some shit that's beyond time. I used to always tell Penny, I'm like, bro, you, you bend time and space when you talk, bro. Cause you're like, <laughs> how are you talking for yeah. so long and it don't feel like it's been that long? Mm -hmm. and, yep. Yeah, man. You can all vouch for that one. <laughs> yeah. And and I I think you know before before Panda crossed over, I you know I was I used to I used to wonder about death, death a lot, and, and you know I was kind of skeptical on how how connected are we to our ancestors and our, our loved ones on the other side, and and when he crossed over, man, it, his his energy and his spirit came through even stronger, and it's like I could, it's like I commun I could communicate with him more, um, and and that was it was a sign, you know what I mean? It's a, and and it continues, you know, it, it doesn't stop. You know, we always talk about connecting with our ancestors and um, you know and and libations and all of this, and that motherfucker proved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. did. Okay. He, oh, he, yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, and, and in a strong way, man. And um, he will always be in our hearts, in our DNA, and in our souls, and will always be connected. Definitely. So we want y'all to come join us and come celebrate with us. We're going to have an event for Brother Panic, the Portals of Pan crossover celebration. It will happen uh, next month, uh, November. 25th, Saturday, November 25th. Uh, we will send the details to y'all. You will see it in this video as well. But uh, everybody come, you know, dress all in black. Um, you can uh, wear all black and uh, Emma Grohl, em, excuse me, <laughs> Emma Green um, accents. You can wear Emma Green or gold accents if you like, but definitely make sure it's all black attire. And uh, we all going to bring in Brother Panic and uh, celebrate together. And I want everybody to remember something. I know this is a time of uh, we lost a great master teacher in the physical. But as you know, as B.O.B. is speaking, he's, we still got more of him now. He's extremely powerful in the spiritual. We have been seeing him dramatically doing his thing. And he has been... Uh, teaching he's still teaching on the other side he's still healing um, and he's just a powerful entity so i miss him like crazy in the physical but i definitely still chat with him talk to him communicate with him everything is still lovely on that front but of course he's missed in, in the, the physical and yeah, yeah, so I All right, so that was um, Brother Panic's family. He passed recently. Just wanted to give a shout out to the brother. I know of him, not a fan. Think he's pretty pseudo, but hey, it is what it is, you know? I just wanted to give a shout out to the brother because he's somebody in the community that people like. But anyway, back to this Billy Carson stuff. And what I'm gonna do is, um, Dr. Meyer had asked me to play that video just to remind people that this is an issue that was dealt with years ago before she do come on. But um, I do want to say to everybody, man, check out, this is what Billy Carson is about. And I'm just going to play a few little clips of what he teaches. And y'all just enjoy these clips. You know what I'm saying? Until I bring Dr. Mayad on. All right, here we go. Billy Carson, hold on there. Take that off. What human beings, how to technology how to make weapons how to how to even 
uh, create, make beer and all this other crazy stuff. Uh, and then they took Enoch on a trip to the Earth's atmosphere and beyond. And he saw the Earth and the shape of the planet as a sphere and how he, he saw that he was living on a giant ball and then brought him back. The only Bible that has the book of Enoch in it is the Ethiopian Bible. It's the only Bible in the world that actually incorporated the book of Enoch into their canonized text. The rest of the Bibles uh, omitted the book of Enoch. According to the book of Enoch, which is one of the apocryphal books left out of the Bible, but he's important because he's mentioned in the Bible, these beings came from heaven to earth. And then they even named, they have names. They taught them how, taught human beings how to technology, how to make weapons, how to, how to even uh, create, make beer and all this other crazy stuff. Uh, and then they took Enoch on a trip to the earth's atmosphere and beyond. And he saw the earth and the shape of the planet as a sphere and how he, he saw that he was living on a giant ball and then brought him back. The only Bible that has the book of Enoch in it is the Ethiopian Bible. It's the only Bible in the world that actually incorporated the book of Enoch into their canonized text. The rest of the Bibles uh, omitted the book of Enoch. This gentleman claims to have built the Great Pyramid, but what's interesting is his Emerald Tablets, which are a text that he authored himself. He didn't have a scribe that authored these texts. Usually these gods or these kings or these really important people would have a scribe etching what they're speaking. He wrote these tablets himself and left them behind for this generation that we are in right now to understand, break down, analyze, and actually learn from. Who is Tho? So Tho, he's, uh, according to himself, he calls himself an Atlantean King. This gentleman claims to have built the Great Pyramid, but what's interesting is his Emerald Tablets, which are a text that he authored himself. He didn't have a scribe that authored these texts. Usually these gods or these kings or these really important people would have a scribe etching what they're speaking. He wrote these tablets himself and left them behind for this generation that we are in right now to understand, break down, analyze, and actually learn from. Who is the some of the ancient tablets like the Atra Asis epic or the Enuma Elishan, the seven tablets of creation, you find out that something written thousands of years ago talks about this EGG working class Anunnaki race that was living on Mars and made their way to Earth. These could possibly be the fallen angels mentioned in the Bible. So they came down to Earth. Why? Supposedly, according to these tablets, they were mining and working for resources on Mars and got very tired of it. They were doing it literally for thousands of years. They wanted some type of relief that they weren't getting from their rulers or kings. The kings were Enki and Enlil, who were running, primarily ruling over Earth. So they fell from Mars to Earth, so to speak, and they came here to go to battle. They were going to have a coup against the kings of Earth. And then that's what Enki said. I'd like to, I have a suggestion. I'd like to genetically modify the existing hominid on this planet, make them into a slave race to take over your workload. And an agreement was made. What's really amazing is when you look into some of the ancient tablets, like the Atra Asis epic or the Enuma Elishan, the seven tablets of creation, you find out that something written thousands of years ago talks about this EGG working class Anunnaki race that was living on Mars and made their way to Earth. These could possibly be the fallen angels mentioned in the Bible. So they came down to Earth. Why? Supposedly, according to these tablets, they were mining and working for resources on Mars and got very tired of it. They were doing it literally for thousands of years. They wanted some type of relief that they weren't getting from their rulers or kings. The kings were Enki and Enlil, who were running, primarily ruling over Earth. So they fell from Mars to Earth, so to speak, and they came here to go to battle. They were going to have a coup against the kings of Earth. And then that's what Enki said. I'd like to, I have a suggestion. I'd like to genetically modify the existing hominid on this planet, make them into a slave race to take over your workload. And an agreement was made. What's really amazing. Atlantean? How do you Thoth, say that? T-H-O-T-H. Thoth. Thoth. Some people say Toth or Thoth. Uh, in Sumerian, he's known as Nicazita. In the Mexico or the Mesoamerican area, like, uh, you know, Teotihuacan and Ch Chichen Itza, he's known as Kukulkan, <clears throat> Lord Pakal, Veracocha. Um, he's the Flying Serpent, you know, all these different names. Just like in Greek, Greece, he's known as Hermes. Mm. In Rome, he's known as Mercury. Uh, Odin. If you go to the Library of Congress, there's two gigantic doors. 
and they have both the Atlantean on one side and Odin on the other. They know who this guy is. 54,000 uh, BC is when he was ruling over the land of Kem. We're talking about 56,000 years ago. Yeah. And in his tech, in his tablets, he says he went to the land of Kem to re kickstart civilization after the flood, means it was already at a high level before the flood or whatever disaster happened. The temple was coming up out of the mud and he went and rebuilt. Then he said, I built the Great Pyramid, pattern after Earth's force. And what the Atlantean? How do you say T H O T H. Thoth. Thoth. Some people say Toth or Thoth. Uh, in Sumerian, he's known as Nicazita. In the Mexico or the Mesoamerican area, like, uh, you know, Teotihuacan and Ch- Chichen Itza, he's known as Kukulkan, <clears throat> Lord Pakal, Veracocha. Um, he's the Flying Serpent, you know, all these different names. Just like in Greek, Greece, he's known as Hermes. Mm. In Rome, he's known as Mercury. Uh, Odin. If you go to the Library of Congress, there's two gigantic doors. And they have Thoth, the Atlantean, on one side. And Odin on the other. They know who this guy is. 54,000 uh, BC is when he was ruling over the land of Kem. We're talking about 56,000 years ago. Yeah. And in his tech, in his tablets, he says he went to the land of Kem to re kickstart civilization after the flood, it means it was already at a high level before the flood or wherever disaster happened. The temple was coming up out of the mud and he went and rebuilt. Then he said, I built the Great Pyramid, pattern after Earth's force. All right. <laughs> oh man, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the person you've been waiting for, Superwoman transformed into Dr. Mayat, my boy, Dig Body. Oh, <laughs> did I pronounce it correctly? No, nah, Brother Garfield. I, before we go on, I wanted you to play that video because I want people well, to did, know I that did. I'm not new to this. I did play it. Are you all ready? Because I, I wanted to go live and, and let, because uh, also I'm getting ready to live stream on my channel as well. And so I wanted to, um, I wanted folks to, um, you know, on my channel to see that old video. Cause you know, that video, uh, brother Garfield was from some years ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that video. I remember that video very well. And, um, I played, I played a, some clips of it. I didn't play all of it, but, um, it, it's, it's amazing. You know, in recent days, I have I didn't realize how pseudo the community mm-hmm. is, meaning Absolutely. that even people who I really admire, mm-hmm. I didn't realize they were so pseudo. I'm looking at some old videos and I don't know, man, we, we got a pseudo, we got pseudo armies surrounding us. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Pseudo and, 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 armies surrounding us. And by the way, rest in peace to brother Panic. Panic, he's a pseudo, but I'm going to give him that rest in peace because he's a brother. I mean, we may not agree with his craziness and his esoteric stuff and all that stuff, but I want to say rest in peace to that brother. And um, I played a piece of the video from his family earlier also, like around. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the brother. You know, I did hear that he, you know, transitioned and there was going to be an announcement today, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with Panda. Could you enlighten me really quickly, brother Garfield? Because I have been hearing these a, things on the internet. A, um, <laughs> he's an upgrade to Phil Valentine upgrade oh. whatever that is so that's okay. like in reverse <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying he's like a phil valentine bobby Hemmett to another level he's a oh whole, okay you know he's a very he got the brooklyn magic very intelligent brother but mm-hmm. i just didn't i didn't agree with anything he said not one mm-hmm. thing he said i agreed with not mm-hmm. one thing but yeah, he's still a brother and absolutely a, so i just got to give a shout out to him and his family and um What's that? What's that hip hop artist um, name? Bob. Bob was in the video with the family, so he's into that stuff with them, and he was in the video too. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, rest in peace to the brother. Absolutely, you know, and my condolences um, to him. You know, to him and uh, you know his family. You know, my condolences to him and his uh, his family, and just and just everybody. You know, who was impacted by his his transition. How old was he, brother Garfield? Um, you know, you know, I'm I'm gonna show you something real quickly. I'm gonna show you something, right? Mm-hmm. When you Google Brother Panic, right? For those who don't know who Brother Panic is, um, let me just go on the, share share the screen real quickly, right? Brother right. Panic passed. You Google it, you see some videos pop up or whatever. Brother Panic, da 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 da. da. Then you go to his video. He made a video in 2020. <laughs> This video here, this is him in 2020. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I noticed something with the video here. He looks bigger, but when look at what the look at what the name of the video is. Detailed instructions on how to die mm. and not come back here. Mm. 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 So he, <laughs> very ironic. So now this is a video he made. Look at how different he looks. He looks totally different. I didn't. I mean, I'm not. A yeah, fan. lost. He, he lost. Yeah, he lost a lot of weight. Lost you know, it's it's weight. yeah, it's it's clear. He lost a lot of. Um, so he was in that lecture series, with Brother Rich. It was him and Phil Valentine and um, what's the other brother that said that he did some spell and all these rats showed up at the court, so they had to throw his case out. This mm. Moorish guy, he's another weirdo. Um, <laughs> But that's what they do. They go around, they have the little tour and they, you know, the, the pseudo, the occult stuff. That's what a lot of people are into. You know, Absolutely. But, um, but I just found it ironic. He made a video about how to die. I've never seen that video before in my life. And that mm-hmm. was the first video that popped up. I just found that kind of ironic. But anyway, um, yeah, that's who he is. That's who okay. he is. Since you didn't know him, that's who he yeah, is. I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you, like I said, I'm glad that you, you shared that that tidbit with me because I, I'm not familiar, you know, with the brother in, in the uh, the um, information or misinformation or disinformation that he was putting out there. But again, my condolences to um, his, you know, his family and everybody who was uh, impacted by his transition. So I see Brother Garfield, you got everybody warmed up. You, so they know what's going on. So you enlighten folks on uh, the claims that have been made by Billy Carson. And I'm glad that you sent me those videos because I, I'm so disconnected. Brother Garfield is ridiculous. Like I, I'm at a point. I let you and Onk, <laughs> you, Onk, Dagger Squad, Pseudo Killers, um, shout out to, what's those other brothers name? I just had them on. Uh, the syndicate. Oh my goodness. Adjustment, uh, adjustment syndicate. Shout out to the adjustment syndicate, dagger squad, pseudo killers. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just let you guys handle that stuff and I'm doing my research, publishing my papers, building my institutions and programs. And, you know, I let y'all, you know, you know, handle that stuff. Cause I, and so I didn't know who Billy Carson was until you brought it to my attention. You brought his name and you brought his work uh, to my attention. And so I reached out to a few elders And Mm -hmm. I said, you know, are you all familiar with this guy? And and shout out to my elders and my Jagnus. I don't know if they want me to mention their names in this or not. So I just, you know, Mm -hmm. but they did say, and and I, and I quote, one of my Jagnus said, show no mercy, bring it to him. Cause they said he's been doing this for years. They said he's making a lot of money off of false, you know, uh, spreading falsehoods about, you know, African history and culture, you know, and they said that, you know, his, his audience is really a lot of European people. And a lot of Europeans are paying him big money to do this. And so I'll be talking about this in, in my presentation as well. You know, he's getting paid to do this stuff, Brother Garfield. So we know what this is. You know, I don't think he believes a tenth of what he's uh, promoting, actually. I think at this point, I think it's a money grab. I think that he's found his niche. I think that and he's not interested in whether or not this information, how this information is impacting us as a whole. Now, I don't know the brother personally. You know, I don't know him personally. I'm just telling you things that I've heard. You know, the elders have said that, you know, he's been doing this for quite some time. And, you know, he's disrespecting our elders, the work of some of our uh, esteemed ancestors. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. So, hey, ladies and gentlemen, she doesn't need an introduction, but she's doing a lot of work. Dr. Maya is a professor at a university. She is a, a doctor, a real doctor. She's qualified to have a conversation with as far as scholarship and how to practice methodology and what you're doing and putting out to the people. So she's one of my great, one of, I'm like her biggest fan. She don't even know that. Absolutely. I'm your number one fan. I don't, care. I don't care about them kids you be teaching. I'm your number one fan. I don't care. I'm taking that spot. But, um, you know, I'm thinking about putting out a book called Made in America, right? Mm. Mm. And Rastafarianism was, you know, one version of it was made in America with Leonard Howell, which is the main version under which Bob Marley came and a lot of people. It was actually the guy who was used to be a part of Garvey movement. He's a Jamaican, but he did say he got some ideas from some brothers from here in Chicago regarding Selassie being the guy and Judah and Rasta and all that stuff. He went back to Jamaica and taught it. 
You know, mm. he actually had knowledge where he got he had knowledge that he got stuff from the Hindus, the weed smoking, some of the lock stuff kind of influenced some people, although they had the Mau Mau in the 60s and so forth. And he, he said that he talks about the outside forces that influence him. But I, I think the part about America and black Americans influencing is left out of the history. So that's a part, that's a good part of the history that I want to acknowledge. But one of the bad parts is Haile Selassie turning his back on African Americans when they were when they wanted to join army and go over there and defend Haile Selassie against the Italians and how the African Americans were treated when they went to Ethiopia when they got land. So that's a part of the history a lot of people don't know about the whole Rastafari movement. As far as made in America, one another, one another topic I'm gonna talk about. Of course, the Black Hebrew Israelites. The Mori Science Temple, the Good, the Bad, the Ugly, um, the Aboriginals. That's another ah, topic. Yeah. Well, talking to you right now, it looked like I have to talk about the occult stuff that's being made in America, that's been taught in our communities by these other people, which is is really white people stuff. Like, it come on, come on, people. you better come, Garf, don't Garf, don't give away my presentation, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see my presentation? No, I'm just playing, brother. <laughs> but, but you're right, it's really white folks. I'm gonna, put really that, white. I'm gonna definitely put that in my book. And um, Black Hebrewism, uh, as it's taught, is is made in America. The Nation of Islam, made in America. We need to give America the credit for all these organizations, whether they're good or bad. It was made here in some innovative way. And I'm sure all the people that started it didn't expect it to be twisted the way it is today. Exactly. You know, I'm sure Cherry and, and um, Christian and William Christian and, and, and Crowdy and Wentworth and Ford did not think they would have had a movement the way it is today. It would have turned out like it is. You know, the Nation of Islam, even under Elijah Muhammad, he would not see how it turned out and so forth. He probably would not have been happy anyway. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he would not have been totally happy. He would have been happy with some stuff, but not with everything, how it turned out. You know, but um, that's what I'm going to do, man. I'm going to talk about made in America, even hip hop. Just because Cool Herc is in the conversation, I was telling some people today, Cool Herc didn't invent hip hop. He's the godfather. But he was an Americanized Jamaican. And I don't care if he's Jamaican. Ain't no Jamaican or Caribbean culture have anything to do with hip hop. He just happens to be a Jamaican that decided to pull all these mindsets together and say, hey, let's do this stuff. He ain't he ain't rap. <laughs> he ain't, ain't breakdance. He ain't do no graffiti. All that stuff is a part of hip hop. So he didn't invent it. But I would call him the godfather of hip hop. That's what I would give him. That's the best title. Because he was an Americanized Jamaican. He was American. Nothing from his culture was brought here to absolutely. make hip hop. Yeah, absolutely. And people need to understand that. People need to understand that. You see, because it, the, the Jamaican is there, I think my, the brother Tariq trying to act like, you know, they're trying to give Jamaican credit. I don't care if he's Jamaican. I only care. I don't care if Kira, Kira's one is Jamaican. I don't care if um, Buster Rhymes is Jamaican. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Hip hop is hip hop. It's made in America. It's an African American cultural staple in the entire world today and we absolutely like that. all right no and, absolutely uh, yeah so that's pretty much what i'm gonna do I'm, I'm putting this book together for the next six to seven months i'm gonna be putting these topics together and shout out to sean from Masi warrior clan i'm gonna probably interview him next thursday to talk about his work about dean calloway and some of the claims they make and I so, love what I love what they're doing. And I've been keeping up. I've been keeping up with his work. And I love that they're going full throttle on him. They're going full throttle on him. And so, like I said, these platforms, Brother Garfield, are important. You know, Dagger Squad, important platform. You know, Masi Warrior Clan, uh, important platform. Kofi Paisai, important platform. Pseudo Killers, important platforms. The Adjustment um, Syndicate, important platforms. Because we need to combat this information. Otherwise, Brother Garfield then eventually this will become the true narrative in a lot of people's minds. If you don't have, if you don't have somebody holding up clean water, everyone will think that the dirty water is clean, you know, and shout out to Baba. I mean, he told me, he said, Dr. Ma, you don't need to get in the mud with those fools. Just keep holding up the clean glass, hold up the clean glass, you know, of water and let, and let people choose. And so I feel like these platforms, brother Garfield, we're holding up the clean glass and we're mm -hmm. giving people an opportunity to choose. And so keep on doing what you're doing, brother Garfield. So let me go ahead and share my screen, brother Garfield. All right. I'm going to excuse myself out and you take over. Go ahead, sis. All right, let's rock out. Here we go. 
Do you want your face on the screen or you just want the full Oh, screen? yeah, absolutely. You ain't, ain't nobody going to cut and paste my stuff because, you know, it's a lot of plagiarism. Put my face on the screen. All it's right. a lot of plagiarism in this community. Put me side by side on the slides. Oh, side by side. Okay. I want to be side by side because also in this so-called, you know, conscious community, there's a lot of plagiarism. You have people who parrot the ideas of others without giving other people their credit. And it's, it's sad, family. It's, it's really sad. Sometimes when people write books and sometimes when they're being interviewed, I'm sitting there, family, listening to them. And I'm saying to myself, oh, Dr. Amos Wilson said that. Oh, that's Baba Ashwall crazy stuff. Oh, that's Dr. Ben. That's Dr. John Henry Clark. Oh, that's Dr. Jacob Carruthers. Or that's Dr. Asa Hillier. Or that's Anthony, Dr. Anthony T. Or Professor Anthony T. Browder, right? So it's a lot of plagiarism going on in this in this community. So yes, definitely make sure that my um that my dad on face is next to my slide. So peace and love to everyone under the sound of my voice. So you know what we're talking about today. Did the aliens build the pyramids? And so thank you so much, Brother Garfield, for um, opening up your platform to me and, and allowing me to come on here and share my ideas or my thoughts about this whole thing, right? And I've been doing this for a minute, family. And he said that he played the video earlier of Polite and I. We had opposing views of... Um, of uh, the origin of the pyramids or the building or construction of the pyramids. And so he played that video for you. And if he if he didn't catch it, family, what I'll do is after this presentation, I'll drop a link to that video in the chat. And so I've been combating these, these ideas, this idea of aliens building the pyramid for about seven or eight years, almost eight years now. Um, also, I'm trying to think what else family. I've been it was the aliens that the build the pyramids, but I feel like it was another topic that I that I debated as well in conjunction to the aliens building the pyramids. So anyway, family, did the aliens build the pyramids? And if you want to reach out to me after this presentation, feel free to email me at dr.maat.msu at gmail.com. I want to begin, family, by dedicating this presentation to our ancestors, for we are the sum total of our ancestors, and we stand on their shoulders. Could you please drop an ashe in the chat? Please drop an ashe right now in the chat, family. We are the sum total of our ancestors, and we stand on their shoulders. Ashe? Ashe. And so I want to definitely shout out, you know, uh, you know, the work of Dr. Shikantai Job, the work of Dr. Ben, the work of Dr. John Henry Clark and the work of Dr. Amos Wilson, okay? Because I will be standing on their shoulders heavy tonight, Ashe, Ashe. So the outline of my presentation is as follows. I'm gonna first go through some introductory stuff where I'll talk about the root of this idea that aliens built the pyramids, right? So we'll go through, we'll define some key terms. We'll talk about the origin of this theory. And when I say theory, I'm not talking about a scientific theory because there is a difference between a scientific theory and a theory. So the theory, where did this theory originate from and who popularized it and how is it impacting Black African people? I say, and then I'm going to move into an overview of the ancient Egyptian pyramids and provide you all with evidence of African, of the African uh, pyramid builders, okay, and an African uh, ingenuity, intelligence and ingenuity. And lastly, I'll conclude uh, with my work. So a little bit about me, okay, and I didn't know that this was on the, uh, you know, separated like that. So a little bit about me, I do have a BS or Bachelor's of Science degree in electrical uh, engineering. I also have a Doctor of Engineering. My research interests are you know, uh, studying African history, culture, and traditions as they relate to science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and education, and examining the impact of utilizing an African-centered STEM education to edify African-American STEM learners. So my goal, family, is to increase the number of African or Black engineers and reconceptualize engineering for Black African people in the 21st century and also formalize and legitimize African-centered STEM education. And so, family, what I've been doing, and I know a lot of you are accustomed to seeing me online, what I've been doing is creating programs and and, and creating studies and analyzing data and publishing data. So I've published, at this point, I've published a few papers with the American Society for Engineering Education uh, Conference. I've published with them. I actually just submitted two abstracts to them on November the 1st. So if you go to their website, ASEE.com, you'll see that uh, abstracts were due on November the 1st, just yesterday. And so my team and I, we submitted two papers there, or two abstracts there. We got a 
work on the final paper and submit, a, take a draft of it in February. I've also published a paper with the National Society for Black uh, engineers, they have a journal called Black Excellence in Science and Technology. And so uh, I published a paper with them. I also published a paper with Jay Peer. Uh, that is a, a, a jur the Journal of Engineering Education Research uh, that is hosted by Purdue University. And so I've been publishing work on how to best educate Black African people you know, what are the best methods or effective methods for teaching science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to our babies, okay? And there's a there's an art to that, right? It's a method to that. And so anyway, family, uh, my professional accomplishments are as follows. Uh, I am currently serving as a principal investigator for a National Science Foundation uh, award um, that is examining the impact of African-centered STEM education. This award was uh, in the amount of 200,000. And just recently, shout out to Dr. James Holly Jr. Uh, he is the PI on an award and I'm actually a co-PI along with another uh, sister by the name of Dr. Brooke. We are co-PIs on a, uh, a proposal for $800,000, $800, which is harvesting Black consciousness in engineering education research. So, in in the last six months, with the help of Doctor, with the help in the nurturing of Doctor James Holly Jr., I was able to uh, be a part of two NSF awards. And for people that don't know about NSF, just Google it: the National Science Foundation. This is one of the highest offices in the U.S. who funds research. Okay, so that's a really big deal. Just recently, I was a speaker at the National Academy of Sciences for a workshop entitled Engaging Black Men and Women in the Breath of Engineering. And so this is a really big deal in uh, the STEM professional space to actually teach, I'm sorry, to speak at the National Academy of Sciences. Okay, and so, yeah, I think I'm more than qualified to, to have this uh, this conversation, okay, about did the aliens build the daggone pyramids, which is utter foolery. So I wanna begin with a, a quote by our great ancestor, Dr. Amos Wilson. And I want you to keep this quote in the forefront of your mind, family. Keep this quote in the forefront of your daggone mind, okay, as we, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so sorry, guys. Keep this in the forefront of your mind, family, as, uh, as I'm going through this presentation. So Dr. Amos Wilson says this. He said, we must recognize the intimate relationship between culture, history, and personality. If we do not know our history, then we do not know our personality. And if the only history we know is other people's history, then our personality, the way we think, the way we behave, right, has been created by that history. I want you to understand this, family. This is powerful, what he's saying. He's telling you there's an intimate relationship between culture, history, and personality. By personality, the way we think and behave, okay? And if we don't know our history and you got other people teaching you your history, then your personality is impacted by that history. Your culture is impacted by that history. Drop an ashe in the chat if you understand what I'm saying to you, family. Drop an ashe in the chat. And this is in Dr. Amos Wilson's book, Falsification of African Consciousness. All right? And make sure, family, that you thumb up the video. I know some people are watching on my platform. Shout out to the, the Ma'adi and family in the building. So make sure that you thumb up this video, family. Also, share this video if you're on Facebook. Post the link. If you're on Twitter, tweet the link. If you're on IG, let's get these views up and let's get this information out. So I want to start off by defining some key terms for you before we jump right in. Pseudo-archaeology, also known as alternative archaeology, fringe archaeology, fantastic archaeology, cult archaeology, and spooky archaeology. So pseudo-archaeology is a broad spectrum of largely unconnected topics and approaches which misapply, misinterpret, and misrepresent archaeological material in a non-scientific and often speculative way. Such topics include the search for lost continents, such as Atlantis. Oh my gosh, am I stepping on somebody's toes right now? The search for lost continents, such as Atlantis. The idea that astronauts from another world or other worlds visited Earth in the past. 
and the existence of connection between sites that are represented as force fields or ley lines. Am I stepping on somebody's toes tonight, family? Am I stepping on somebody's toes tonight? Astronaut alien theory. That's another key term. I want you all to keep these key terms in the forefront of your mind, family. Astronaut, astronaut alien theory claims that extraterrestrials played an instrumental role in both the evolution and civilizations of ancient man. This theory, because it is a theory, it's not a scientific theory, but it's a theory. This theory can date its origins back so far as the 19th century with the rise of science fiction. Hold on, wait a minute, family. I'm just trying to put some things into perspective for you, okay? So pseudo-archaeology, so those ideas of Atlantis and the Anunnaki, that bull crap that they're teaching you and promoting you, it falls under the category of pseudo-archaeology. Astronaut alien theory, so the idea that extraterrestrials came down and mixed with man and gave man information to build structures and civilization, mm, that falls under pseudo-archaeology. And look at what it says about this theory. Its origins date back to the 19th, late 19th century with the rise in what? Science fiction. Hmm. Methodo methodo mythology, mythology family. Mythology refers to a body of stories that attempt to explain the origins and fundamental values of a given culture and the nature of the universe of humanity. In modern usage, the term can also mean stories that a particular culture believes to be true and that, and that use the supernatural to interpret natural events. Ancient myths, ooh, I want y'all to keep in mind, listen to the statement. Ancient myths are generally founded by imagination and intuition rather than objective evidence. Wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. I just want to, I want to read that line to you one time, one more time, family. Ancient myths are genu generally founded by imagination and intuition rather than objective evidence. <laughs> myths identify and help explain human propensities and natural phenomena with the actions and attributes of gods in the primordial past. And then lastly, family, I want to define for you empirical evidence. Empirical evidence is information acquired by observation and, of, or experimentation. Scientists record and analyze this data. The process is a central part of the scientific method leading to proving or disproving a hypothesis and our better understanding of the world as a result. Hold on, family. Hmm. Hold on, family. Hold on, family. Hold on, family. So when these people tell you, you know, about, you know, oh, the, the aliens built the pyramids and, uh, you know, and, and the, they came in, these astronauts came down and gave us, gave the, the, the man, um, information to do this and uh hold on let me go back you got all this stuff lost continents and astronauts visited other world from other worlds visited earth in the past where's the empirical evidence did anyone ever ask that the empirical evidence hmm. so anyway under pseudo archaeology as you see on the screen we see that cult archaeology right is also you know considered pseudo archaeology so it's one of the same right these are the five elements of cult archaeology. A theoretical particularism. Hmm. Claims are made and debated with little or no attention to their implications beyond a limited, self contained system of explanations. So they're atheoretical. Okay? A theoretical particularism. Claims are made and debated with little or no attention to their implications beyond a limited, self-contained system of explanation. The second element, narrowness of interest to a specific topic or claim. Only the data that supports said claim is explored and accepted. Wait a minute. Only the data. See, that's not science. That's not how science works. 
in science, we look at all the data. We analyze all of the data, right? In order to derive at an objective conclusion. We don't look at some of the data that supports what we think or what we believe. We look at all of the data to derive at an objective conclusion. So in cult archeology, span they have a narrowness of interest to a specific topic of claim, meaning that only the data that supports said claim is explored and accepted. Third, over, oversimplification. So seeing the world in terms of black and white, accusing the establishment of being unwilling to accept new ideas. Come on, family, put an ashe in the chat. If you've heard these daggone pseudos, oh, you just don't, you just riding with the establishment. That's the white man's science. You don't, you don't accept new ideas. You just want to believe what the white man is telling you. Come on, put an ashe in the chat if you understand what I'm saying to you. So these people who practice cult archaeology will accuse you, right? of believing in the establishment and being unwilling to accept new ideas. Look at this. It says why the cultists promote themselves as the bringers of light. So they're the ones who have the answers. Nobody else have the answers. You in a cult. Appeals to belief and authority. It says authorities, both individuals and principles are challenged and criticized for their authoritarianism but people are asked to accept new authorities. So they'll tell you, oh, you appealing to the authorities, but then they'll bring a whole nother set of folks in front of you and ask you to accept their new authorities. So now they become the authorities. I hope you understand what I'm saying to your family right now. It says ambivalent elitism. Ambivalent elitism. It says established science is vilified Yet the cult seeks and desires endorsements from authorities and respected individuals of that community. So wait a minute. They'll vilify science and then pull up the, 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 uh, the, the, the uh, Journal of Nature. Come on now. How many times have we seen it? They'll vilify science and then pull up an article. The, the CDC said, well, wait a minute, sir. Or oh, man, we can't have it both ways. We can't have it both ways. Either you don't fool with the CDC and you don't, well, the CDC is not, I'm just talking about family, I'm just talking about it's the establishment, the government, period. But what they'll do, family, is they'll pull up these scientific journals, and the CDC is not a scientific journal, so I don't want y'all to run and say, Dr. Mahat said it's a scientific journal, but the CDC is the control of the disease center, right? But my point is, they'll pull up this stuff, right? Scientific information or information from the establishment, but then they'll vilify it, but then they want to use it. I'm confused. That's why it's called ambivalent <laughs> elitism. Established science is vilified, yet the cult seeks and desires endorsements from authorities and respected individuals of that community. <laughs> so family, I wanna go back to this quote right here. Dr. Amos Wilson, he said, we must recognize the intimate relationship between culture and history and personality if we do not know our history then we do not know our personality. And if the his only history we know is other people's history, then our personality has been created by that history. Well, let's see who's created that history. Let's see who created that history of, of the ast who popularized the astronaut alien theory that claimed the extraterrestrials, you know, played an instrumental role in both the evolution and civilizations of ancient man. And I actually showed you the slide already. Erich von Daniken. This is the guy. So these folks will sit here and tell you aliens built the pyramids, but when you trace the origin or who popularized this idea, look at where we, look at the who's at the root of it. So this is the person who is constructing the history, thus shaping our what? Put it in the chat, family. It started with the P. It started with the P, put it in the chat. He's shaping, this is the guy that's shaping the history. So Dr. Amos Wilson said that there's an intimate relationship between history, culture, and personality. So if this guy is shaping the history, then he's also shaping the collective person and, we're, and we believe it. Let's not, add, let's, let, me, let me add that part. If he's shaping the history and we subscribe to that history, then he is also shaping our collective personality and our daggone culture.
Erich von Daniken. Look at this. Multi-million copy bestseller. But family, it gets deeper. So in 1954, when this guy was 19 years old, he had an opportunity to go to Kemet and climb the Great Pyramid. And that was during the time when you could actually climb up the pyramids. But now you can't do it. And how do I know? I actually took a trip with uh, Baba or my Jegna, uh, Anthony T. Browder. Had the honor of going over there to commit with him and his, his daughter. And it's a whole group of us. I think it was maybe 100 of us that went over there. And uh, no, you cannot climb the pyramids anymore. But in 1954, you could. And in 1954, Mr. Danikin was 19 years old. And this was a guy who had a, a Catholic school education and he had a passion for flying saucers, okay? <laughs> okay. So he went, he climbed the pyramids. And after that, 14 years later, he wrote a book called Ancient, he, uh, I'm sorry, he wrote a book called Chariots of the Gods, 14 years later, 1968, arguing that extraterrestrials influence ancient sites, the pyramids included. Let's pause. I wanna say this again. This was a guy, this was a guy who had a Catholic, a Catholic education. This is not an, an anthropologist. He's not any, a scientist of any sort, you know, the man, he's not in STEM period. He had a Catholic school education and he had a passion for flying saucers. And so he decided to write a book arguing that extraterrestrials influence, you know, ancient sites, including, you know, the, the pyramids, okay? And he actually popularized the ancient astronaut theory. He went on family to write 26 volumes on ancient astronauts selling more than 63 million copies worldwide. Worldwide, family. <laughs> Fast forward, family, you have TV shows. Well, it was a TV show that was produced by on the History Channel called Ancient Aliens. And look at this. It was produced in 2010. Okay. Produced in 2010. And uh, it says it, it explores the controversial theory that extraterrestrials have visited Earth for millions of years, from the age of the dinosaurs to ancient Egypt, from early cave drawings to continued mass sightings in the U.S. Each episode in this hits history series, hits this history. They're calling this a history series, family. They should call it a pseudo history series. But it says, give historic depth to the questions, speculations, provocative controversies, first-handed accounts, and grounded theories surrounding this age-old debate. Did intelligent beings from outer space visit Earth thousands of years ago? You know, so you had people like this. You got fools like Zachariah Stitchens. And, and then you got people in this so-called conscious community who claim to be enlightened, bringing you. They, they don't fool with white folks. I don't fool with white folks. But then they bring us all the white folks who are quacks. The, the I don't even call it the information. They'll bring, they'll promote and teach, right, and preach the misinformation and disinformation from the very same European people that they demonize. What a contradiction. So Billy Carson, Billy Carson. So that's who we're here to talk about his claims tonight. So Billy Carson said a lot. And, and over the years, he, you know, he's been making a lot of money. You know, he's been making a lot of money. You know, this man gets paid thousands and thousands of dollars to do interviews, to do workshops, I mean, up to maybe ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So he gets paid to spread the narrative that aliens built, you know, the pyramids, that aliens, uh, you know, were responsible for giving this information to, you know, black and brown civilizations. He's, he gets paid thousands of dollars to do that. And I, and I get it. I, 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 you know, everybody has to make a living. And, you know, I do believe that people have a price tag. And I, I guess, you know, they, you know, they matched or met Billy's price tag. And so that's what he does. You know, he's he's making money. I don't take that stuff serious, you know, but there are some people who do. But I would say that uh, Mr. Billy Carson, uh, that he suffers from what, what Dr. Naeem Akbar calls an anti-self disorder. So if you read the Akbar papers in African psychology, Dr. Naeem Akbar 
uh, defines anti-self disorder as this. He says, the anti-self disorder not only identifies with the dominant oppressors group, hmm, because you know that it was white folks who said that, you know, that the aliens built the pyramids and all that other stuff. So we know where it comes from, right? So anti-self disorder not only identifies with the dominant oppressor, oppressors group, but also identifies with the projected hostility and negativism towards their group of origin. Hmm. Hmm. Do you not believe that it's negative family to, to deny, you know, and lie about, you know, the African intelligence and African ingenuity? You not think that that's negative, that that's something harmful. Okay. And it says in terms of France, France Fanon in 1968, they represent the true colonized mentality. So what are the implement, implications of saying that the uh, aliens built the pyramids? <laughs> well, what they're doing is promoting and perpetuating racist notion of African history and culture, right? The African intelligence and ingenuity doesn't exist, right? It, it, it doesn't exist. You all don't think that that's racist, right? I mean, this is really scientific racism when you think about it. You don't remember that whole idea, you know, of racial racial inferiority and racial superiority, and you don't remember that based on your the size. And we know that scientific racism is pseudoscience, by the way. We already know that. But what they're promoting and perpetuating this is scientific racism, really. So black and brown people didn't possess the intelligence and ingenuity, people. Because think about it, family, and you can let me know in the chat if I'm wrong. I haven't heard or read that aliens went to Europe and uh, gave, you know, information to Sir Isaac Newton and some of those European thinkers and innovators. They never say that about European people, that aliens went over there and built their structures and gave information to their thinkers and innovators. Only black and brown civilizations, okay? Only black and brown civilizations are told, oh, the astronauts came down. The aliens did it. They came and gave them the information. Hmm. Another implication is that we are omitted from STEM history. So people really believe when you start saying the aliens built the pyramids and they gave them the information, right? First of all, you're, discredit you're discrediting the African intelligence and ingenuity, right? So that doesn't exist. Okay, you're discrediting that. And then you're saying that we didn't contribute to science. Our African ancestors didn't contribute. To the, to the growth and expansion of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Another implication is this. Now you have a lot of negative perceptions. There are a lot of negative perceptions and low expectations of African or Blacks in STEM. I know because I worked in it. I work in it. My students are in it. European people and Asians don't believe that our babies can, can be successful in STEM. They don't believe you. They're not aware of your daggone history. They don't know about your African intelligence and your African ingenuity. So they believe you didn't contribute to STEM. You didn't do nothing. So they, there, there are these negative perceptions and low expectations of us when we work in STEM fields, right? They actually believe that African people are incapable of succeeding in STEM. You know how I know? If you all do the history and everything I'm saying, you can go and verify it. Morgan State University's um, School of Engineering was established in 1984. Prior to that, when Morgan was trying to get the uh, Department of in Electrical Engineering, Department of Industrial Engineering, and Department of Civil Engineering housed at Morgan State University, they had to battle. It was a long, drawn-out battle between Morgan State University and the state. And you know what the state said? And I quote, we don't believe that black students are capable of learning engineering. So you know where they wanted to put the program? They wanted to put it in Towson University. You Google Towson University, that's a PWI. They wanted to put it in Towson University. They also wanted to put the program at UMBC, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Google it, it's a PWI. So these are negative perceptions that they have of our people as a result of discrediting or denying, right, 
the African intelligence in, in I'm sorry, the African intelligence in ingenuity, uh, omitting us from STEM history. So now they do have a negative perceptions and low expectations of us when we enter STEM. STEM education is another implication. STEM education has been impacted by these notions, right? Because you have African contributions who that are omitted from the curriculum. When our children learn about mathematics, they teach them about Pythagoras. No one is talking about the uh, papyrus of Amos. No one's talking about any of that. No one's taught teaching our babies that we built. No one's saying that. That's not a part of the standard STEM curriculum in K through 12, even in the university. Also, African ways of learning and knowing are ignored because they don't think you have intelligence and ingenuity any goddamn way. African ways of learning and knowing are ignored. And then as a result of our accomplishments not being included in STEM education, our children have feelings of inferiority within. It causes feelings of inferiority within our African or black STEM learners. You know, some, some children, even university students, they don't feel like they can be successful in STEM because they don't see the models. They don't, under, they don't know our history. They're not aware of our accomplishments, our ancient accomplishments, right? You may tell them about Lewis Lattimore or Elijah McCoy or something like that, but they don't know about this history, our ancient history. They don't know that we are actually pioneers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So look at this. Despite the rich, the rich legacy of African-Americans in STEM today, African-Americans are underrepresented in these fields. According to the Pew Research Center in 2021, African-Americans make up only 9% of the STEM workforce. It says the aforementioned statistic mirrors the low number of African-American awardees of STEM degrees. In 2018, a little, a little over 1 million STEM bachelor's degrees were earned. The National Science Foundation reports that whites were awarded 61%, a a Asians were awarded 10%, and African Americans were awarded 8%. And it says the low percentage of STEM, de STEM degrees awarded to African Americans correlates with the low concentration of African Americans in STEM programs. So our children don't even go into STEM. You got our children really believing, family. You have our children who believe that this is the white man's science, white man, that's a, that's a white thing to be a scientist. That's a white thing to be an engineer. There, that's a white thing to be a mathematician. Hmm. And family, right now we're in trouble. We're in trouble, family, because we're undergoing a technological revolution, right? In the next probably five to 10 years, you know, you got AI is, is taking over. Um, a lot of people are losing jobs now. Um, some of these jobs that our children have working for McDonald's and, you know, Chick-fil-A and in different places like that, it'll all be automated in the next five, five years. As a matter of fact, they have stores that are completely automated now. OK, one day, one day, you know, you, you won't have an Amazon stock in the shelves. You have robots. You won't have people stocking those shelves in Amazon warehouses. You have robots. Right. You have robots. Um, once once they perfect you know, autonomous driving cars, and they're doing a damn good job of it right now. And I'm talking about in the context of delivery, like delivering package, you won't have that. Even Ubering, that'll be gone. You have an autonomous driving car that's going to come pick you up and take you where you want to go. So let me ask you all a question in the chat. And I am looking at my chat right now. I can't see Garfield's chat, but I can see my chat. What is going to, what is going to be the fate of Black people in five to 10 years if, you know, if we don't go into STEM, if we don't encourage our children to pursue STEM degrees, right, STEM careers, what will be the fate of us here in America, huh, in the next five to 10 years when stores are automated, when, when, when cars, autonomous driving cars are delivering mail and deliver, yeah, delivering mail and packages, huh? Right now, you have drones that are power washing buildings. Hmm? What is going to be our fate? Tell me in the chat. I'm looking. I'm looking. What's going to be our fate? 
So it says right here, while conventional STEM, te te I'm sorry, while conventional STEM teaching aims to develop and strengthen interdisciplinary skill sets, such as critical thinking, problem solving, and exploratory learning, European history and epistemology are at its core. Dr. Amos Wilson argues that African Americans do not learn neutral mathematics and science. European history is ingrained in the study of these disciplines, names of concepts, laws, and who discovered them. African American contributions and ways of knowing are completely disregarded. So when you say that the pyramids are being built by aliens, you're discrediting the genius of this African genius, Imhotep, who lived in the 27th, who lived in 20, in the 27th century BC. And he was the first, the world's first multi, multi genius. He was an architect, engineer, and physician in recorded history. And they said that he was revered as a philosopher, okay, and acknowledged by the Egyptian people as having divine status after his death. And he was also deified by the Greeks. So when you say that the Dagon aliens built the pyramids, you're disrespecting one of our great ancestors, Emotep. The step pyramid was designed by Emotep for King Zosar, and it was also built, you know, during that time period, the 27th century BC, it consists of six box-like steps called mastabas that rise to a height of 197 feet, that when I went there, it was very spiritual to me to sit there and bask in, in our African intelligence and ingenuity was just, it was a feeling that I can't even describe. When you also say that we did not, we know that aliens built the pyramids, you know, you're disrespecting him, him, you knew, him, you knew. Okay, who lived actually before Emotep during the 26th century BC? He served as the vizier and royal seal bearer to Khufu. Uh, it says there's a well preserved mortuary statue of him, and the titles include you know, member of the elite, vizier, king seal bearer, priest of basket, priest of Shesmet, uh, high priest of Thoth, overseer of all concentration projects, overseer of all concentration projects of the king and many others. They say that he was probably responsible for the building of Khufu's Pyramid of Giza, the Great Pyramid, which I actually had a chance to visit when I was there with uh, Baba Anthony T. Browder. So the Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the largest and oldest and only remaining seven wonders of the world. And it sits on the Giza Plateau and was constructed during the 26th century for King Khufu. It consists of 2.5 million stones, each weighing two to, two to 70 tons. Right? And I know some of you say, oh, that's a lot. How did they do it? How did they maneuver it? How did they move it? We know. We know. It says the height in antiquity was 481 feet to die, to die, today, 455 feet, and the base is 756 feet. So we, so Anthony T. Brown in his work talked about how or mentioned uh, that the base is a square whose perimeter is equal to the circumference of a circle with the radius equal to the height of the pyramid. So the builders of these pyramids were, they definitely knew mathematics. They understood physics. They understood material science, right? They understood uh, architecture and in construction, all right? So the Great Pyramid was initially perfectly, initially perfectly aligned to the true north. When you, dis when you say that the aliens built the pyramids, you're disrespecting our scholars. You're disrespecting our scholars, such as Anthony T. Browder, who actually has, who's doing an archaeological dig as we speak over in Kemet. And he found, he uncovered a tomb of Karakamu. That's why we call him Karakamu. He discovered Karakamu's tomb, and I had the opportunity to go down there and see it, family, for myself. All right? So Anthony T. Browder, you're disrespecting him when you say make claims like that, you know? So if you want to know more about, you know, the pyramid, the buildings of the pyramids, check out his work. So let's get into some of the evidence, family. Tell me in a chat, did you know that there was a logbook for the Great Pyramid of Giza that was found? So I guess the aliens must have created the logbook and it created, like, come on now. Like, this stuff gets ridiculous. They found a logbook, okay? And it says right here, in 2013, archaeologist Pierre Talat and Gregory Marad discovered a logbook from the 27th year of the reign of the Pyramid of Khufu, 
that describe the construction. So it might have been the 26, because, you know, sometimes they say the 26, sometimes they say the 27. But it says the construction of the Great Pyramid. It was written more than 4,500 years ago by a middle ranking inspector named Murr, who detailed over the course of several months the construction operations for the Great Pyramid, which was which was nearing completion. OK, in the work at the limestone quarries at Torah on the opposite bank of the Nile River. It included daily timetables, reports on the daily lives of the construction workers, hmm. not slaves, construction workers, and notes that the limestone blocks exhumed at Torah, which were used to cover the pyramid's exter exterior, were transported by boat along the Nile River in a system of canals to the construction site, a journey that took between two and three days. They didn't mention in the log books. They said the construction, they didn't mention in the log book any aliens or any gods, right? Or deities helping them do this. This wasn't mentioned in the in the log book. And if you all want to read more up on it, you know, check out this, right? The Scientific American, the 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 um master builders. They have an article in there called The Pyramid Effect, where they actually get into the social organization that they set up during that particular time, during the construction, okay? There's a wall painting, because some of you might say, well, Doc, how did they maneuver that stuff? They had a system. Evidence that they had a system can be found in the damn tombs, family. You know that our ancestors wrote. They wrote on the stones. As, as, as Baba Ashwal Kwesi would say, our, our, our books were in stone. It says, wall paintings, right? In the ancient tomb of Jehudi Ma'at, depicts 172 men hauling an immense statue using ropes attached to the sledge. In the drawing, a person can be seen standing on the front of the sledge pouring water over the sand. Look at this family. They had a system going on and they used water. Now we're getting into physics. Wait a minute, we're getting into physics. We're talking about physics, friction, force, all right? So it says a scientific journal paper investigated the effect of different amounts of water on a vi variety of sands by measuring the force necessary to pull the sled. Hmm. So there's a lot of evidence that showed that the, the, our ancient ancestors were more than capable of doing this. Here's the evidence family. That's what I'm giving to you right now. The papyrus of Amos, who was the scribe that actually wrote this papyrus, but in the museum, at uh, the, Brit the British Museum, they refer to the papyrus as the Rhine uh, mathematical papyrus, but it is displayed at the, the British Museum, but I like to call it, you know, the papyrus of Amus or Ames. So it was produced by him, it's dated back to 1550 BC during the second intermediate, intermediate period. It contains 84 tables of division, multiplication, and handling of fractions, and geometry, including volumes and areas. But look at this family. Problems 56 through 59 are geometric problems concerning who? The pyramids. Hmm. So maybe the aliens wrote this down. I don't know. One, one specific pyramid that I do want to mention is Mitum, the Mitum Pyramid. The Mitum Pyramid, it says right here, at Mitum, 30 miles south of Memphis, King Sanufu, I'm probably butchering these names, family. That's not my thing, okay? It says, who came to the throne around 2613 BC, built Egypt's, Egypt's first true and straight-sided pyramid. This started as a stepped pyramid. It was stepped, but as it neared completion, the steps were packed with stone and the whole structure was cased in the finest limestone. In its final form, the pyramid stood approximately 311 feet high. Now you might say, well, why is Dr. Mott mentioning this daggone Mitum Pyramid? Because archaeologists, and you're looking at the paper that I pulled in a journal from a scientific journal, archaeologists perform excavations at the site and they uncovered blocks, right? Pieces of uh, this pyramid. And what did they find on those blocks? They found the names of the pyramid builders, gangs. So they worked in gangs and they found the names of the gangs of the pyramids. They found the name of the gangs of the pyramid builders written in ochre, red ochre. That's what they found, family. In Medjunetta, by the way. That's what you're looking at right now. That's what they found, family. 
So we know the names of the gangs that built the daggone pyramids, which gives credence that these people worked in gangs in a system, a system of men, different men, different gangs. They worked together to build the pyramid. We had the names of the daggone gangs. Maybe it's the gangs of the aliens. I don't know. And this is the title of the paper where they pull, you know, these archaeologists excavated at Midem. So you might say, well, oh, Doc, you know, you're talking about red ochre. Maybe the aliens put their names on the red ochre or put the names in the gangs. Well, wait a minute. This is Brother Onks. And shout out to Brother Onks. This is his favorite site. He always go to the caves in South Africa. He always talks about those caves in Pinnacle Point. The border cave and Blombo's caves, right? You know, South Africa was the cradle of humanity, right? Right after, you know, when they went down south during the Ice Age. But we, that's another discussion. But at Pinnacle Point, at Pinnacle Point, they found 57 pieces of hematite. It says an, an iron ore, or ore that can be ground up to produce a blood red pink pigment called red ochre. So wait a minute. In these caves, family, in these caves is evidence that our ancestors were painting themselves with red ochre. And then you find that in the pyramids, because we did travel, family, right? Our culture, see, people don't understand, man. Culture, you know, culture, it, it, it travels with the people, man. You know, it travels with the people. When you move, when you go places, your culture goes with you, family. But we can connect that to pinnacle point. We can correct, we can connect the right red ochre and writing in red ochre right to pinnacle point, right in South Africa. Not to the aliens, but to the South Africans. When you say that the aliens built the pyramids and all of that, family, you know, you're disrespecting our African ancestors. And when you all make other foolish claims, we never went on the moon. We never, there's no such thing as the moon landing. We never went there. You're disrespecting our ancestors. You're disrespecting Katherine Johnson, the sister that, that completed the NASA calculations necessary for several space missions, which included, which included circuits um, uh, orbiting or circumventing the Earth, you know, in the 1969 moon landing. So when you say that the 1969 moon landing never happened, you're disrespecting your ancestors. When you say foolishness out of your mouth, like, man, I don't believe in, it's a flat earth out there. I don't believe the earth is round. You're disrespecting your ancestor, Gladys Mae West. You're disrespecting her. This was a sister who worked at the Naval Proving Ground in Virginia in the 1950s during segregation, during Jim Crow. And you know what she did? She worked on the Naval Ordnance Research Calculator that determined the movement of Pluto in relation to Neptune, a U.S. ocean surveillance satellite called CSAT that provided data on oceanographic, oceanographic conditions and features in a satellite program called GeoSat that created computer models of the Earth's surface. Hmm. Her, her later work led to the creation of a model of the Earth's shape called the geoid. This model was one of the foundations of the GPS system. So when you talk about, oh, the earth ain't flat, the first, you're, dis you're, you're disrespecting your ancestors, Gladys Mae West. So anyway, family, we need to be in the business of creating a generation of people, a generation that is uh, scientific literate, scientifically literate. OK, so make sure, family, that you get your children enrolled in programs like Conscious Ingenuity. You can go to ConsciousIngenuity.com. Go right now to ConsciousIngenuity.com. Right now, while you're listening to Dr. Ma'at, go to another browser, type in ConsciousIngenuity.com. ConsciousIngenuity.com. I said Conscious Ingenuity. <laughs> ConsciousIngenuity.com, family. And sign your child up. Shine your child up. Join the email list. We are an African-centered STEAM program, science, technology, engineering, art, agriculture. I say that's the double A, mathematics program, okay? K through eighth program that utilizes STEAM to build character, confidence, and capabilities. We're all over the place, family. We're all over the place. If you look down beside, down at the bottom, you see my students. 
those are my students family and and three or four students are missing from here i'm 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 raising up an army of black engineers who are going into the community teaching our babies because that's what it's about family the, this is my team right here you say where's your army this is my army right here and like i said three or four people could didn't make the photo shoot and i'm getting ready to um to bring on at least 10 more students so the next picture you're going to see when i put it out there next year you're going to see 20 to 30 people young black engineers who came up under me out in the community teaching our people throw an ashe in the chat throw an ashe in the chat family and you see that they're in the lab being trained they're being trained at the, at the top right corner you're looking at mr lewis he is a technician with over 30 years of experience. And so we're in the lab training these instructors. So they're not just running around here Googling something going into the community. They're at an institution being trained by black engineers and technicians. Family, make sure you get your child enrolled in the UACI summer STEM camp. Right now, family, I want you to Google UACI summer STEM camp and sign up. Sign up, okay? The UACI STEM camp is a collaboration between the Uhuru Academy and Conscious Ingenuity designed to nurture young minds age 8 to 16 with the power of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and a strong cultural foundation. Our camp is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's about fostering a deep sense of cultural identity, inspiring creativity, and developing skills that will shape our scholars' future. Family, this is the type, these are the type of programs that you need to get our babies in, family. Baba Amin and I just touched base about two weeks ago. We're gonna offer this camp during the winter break in December, okay? And then we're also gonna offer it again for one week during the spring break. So during spring break and winter break, family, don't just have your child in the house playing the dad on PlayStation. Right. Or, or on YouTube or uh, uh, Netflix, watching anime or on their cell phones, playing Roblox and Minecraft and all of this BS. Make sure that they're doing con something constructive with their time when they're off. Get your child enrolled in the UACI STEM camp family. Also, family, if you're in the DMV area. If you're in the DMV area, even if you're in Delaware or Philly, get down here to Baltimore family one week every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Come post up. See, I'm the type of parent family. There's no limit to what I'll go to make sure that my child has an educational experience. If I got to travel to California and post up there for two, three weeks to make sure that my children learn something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make the sacrifice because that's what it's about. So if you're, you know, in the DMV area, if you're in Delaware, if you're in Philly, even if you're in New York, come post up in Baltimore family for a weekend and get your child in the Kamoyo Shule Africana Weekend School where our children learn our story and culture, where we focus on reading comprehension, African philosophy, character development, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and more, where we're cultivating integrity, excellence, and discipline. So if you are interested, family, in enrolling your child, please make sure that you reach out to Bob Imhotep. You can reach out to him. He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. Or simply send an email to Kamoyo Shule, Kamoyo Shule at gmail.com. I want to close right now, family, with this quote by Dr. Amos Wilson. Dr. Amos Wilson said, we must be instructed by history and should transform history into concrete reality. Mm, wait a minute, family. So this, I wasn't trying to make you all feel good tonight. I want you all to know about the African intelligence and the African ingenuity, the African genius. I want to reawaken those, those genetic memories, family, you know, and we use that awakening or that reawakening, okay, to turn what we now know into concrete reality. Use science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to liberate ourselves, to nation build. See, I'm at a point, family, don't, don't come to me and talk about liberation and nation building if you're not talking about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. If you're not talking about that, you can, I, I don't wanna talk about nation building. Get that out of there. 
Sister, sister, you know, we just want a nation build, my sister, and pour some libation over here and nation build. No, 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 no. That's cool because I pour libation. That's cool. But that can't be that can't be just it. Right. You know, you can have your African spiritual system, your EFI and all that. That's cool. That just can't be it. When you're talking about liberation and sovereignty, you better be talking about science, science, technology, engineering, art, agriculture, and mathematics, right? Fannie Lee Hamer said, a nation who can't, you know, uh, feed itself can't free itself, Ashe. And you running around here talking about we nation building. You ain't growing your own food. You building a nation can't protect it because you can't build your own satellites, your own weaponry, your own communication systems. Come on now. Is this, are we joking here? always serious. So Dr. Amos Wilson says we must be instructed by history and should transform and should transform history into concrete reality, into planning and development, into the construction of power hmm. and the ability to ensure our survival as a people. Let me read this quote one more time for you, family. And after this, I want you to drop a ashe in the chat if you're feeling what he said. You know, history isn't about feeling good. Man, we was kings and queens. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not just about feeling good. It's about empowering ourselves. So Dr. Amos Wilson says, we must be instructed by history and should transform history into concrete reality, into planning and development, into the construction of power and the ability to ensure our survival as a people. With that, I say, I say, thank you so much, family, for listening. Peace and black power. My sister, oh my God. Let me applaud you first of all, man. First of all, let me applaud you. And what is your cash app so the people could show you some love? Because, hey, what we're witnessing, family, is what we have. You know, we like to give people flowers after they pass. You know, they pass. They're like, hey, we got to collect some funds to a funeral or something. Nah, we got to show love while the person is alive and well and healthy and is going to be here for us for another 100 years. I wish Dr. Maya lived for 100 to 150 more years on this earth. We need more Dr. Mayats in the, I'm telling you. Hey, you know what you never talked about? That I, I got to say this. I'm mad with you now. You got a movie coming out and your brother is in the movie. You ain't talking yes, about that. Yeah, because it wasn't STEM. It wasn't related to STEM. I wanted oh, to keep okay. the STEM focus. So hey, I, I, wanna, I actually want to come back and we talk about that. We have a yeah, whole you show. Played it, you played it on your channel. Everybody's like, that's so like Garfield. That's so like Garfield. <laughs> I'm like, I couldn't hide my accent. That's crazy. They're like, that sound like Garfield. Yeah, it'll, it'll be out. It'll be out. Hopefully, we're looking at the end of November. We're looking at the end right, of that's November. That's what's up, man. That's mm -hmm. what's up. I, and and the, um, the book I'm writing, Made in America, is actually going to also be a film. Beautiful. So the, the guy that's a filmmaker, that's very popular. Um, I'm going give to give him the script when I'm done with, with the book. And um, Beautiful. turn it into a movie. Because I think this is something that we need to see years ago. And, and I'm trying to get Chuck Morgan in, into doing a movie about Dr. York, man. Because I tell you, Dr. Maya, 200 years from now, somebody's going to find one of his books. And uh -huh. say, this guy was a messiah. And the government tried to lock him down and locked him up because he was telling us the truth. So you need to have it on record. Not only a website, because somebody could always take it on your website. But you make a video. And that video could recycle and people remix it and steal it. But that video still exists and it's documenting the craziness that that man did. And Absolutely. Awful behavior. So we need to document that. But um, I, I want to say to you, you're doing a lot. I don't know how you even found time to be on my little channel. Oh, you know, I'm going to make time for you. You know, I'm going to make time for you. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to make time for you. Black History Month. I do need you for Black History Month. I want you to um talk about um what we moving forward and what we can do with all the elements, all these main elements we have, whether it's Islam, Christianity, whatever, how we can network to move it forward as far as a people and what we need to concentrate on. Of course, you're going to say STEM, you know but I'm, I'm sure you have other stuff that we could work on as Absolutely. a people. Absolutely. You know, you know what's crazy, though? As a people, we always say we don't have time. But why are there so many pseudos? Why the pseudos are winning then? Because obviously they have time to watch the pseudos 
So what I always tell people this, you know, the only thing that I worry 100% about is my family. If Absolutely. my children are good, I'm good. I don't care about nothing else. I Absolutely. don't care if, if I get two views. I don't care if I get one view. I know I have my children and that's what I live for and, and leaving a legacy for them. Absolutely. And I think a lot of us who watch YouTube and stuff, people think like, I know you. I know Dr. Maya. Meaning I've seen Dr. Maya. I've hugged her. I've kissed her on the cheek. Absolutely. I've said, hey, what up, sis? Absolutely. Whatever. This is somebody I know. Absolutely. A lot of people don't have that type of relationship in the community. We're just people who just be on, be on um, internet. Just internet. People don't know. I've known Dr. Maya from what? 2015. Yeah, I've known Dr. Maya. Yeah, eight and, years. and people, let me tell you something, man. This sister is brilliant. And she has a vision and I'm telling you, I'm with her. Every move she make, I'm with her. I'm telling you, this sister is powerful. I'm telling you. I went to, to the UK to promote my book, and I saw Dr. Maya. I saw your documentary in the same bookstore that the lady was going to sell my book. I'm like, oh, Dr. Maya. Was a lady. <laughs> she all over. She worldwide. She ain't just an internet lady. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah no, so, no doubt. No doubt. And shout out to the UK, because the UK yes. shows me mad love. All these yes. people in the chat. These people are doing the thing and they appreciate us. And I want to say I appreciate them. Every month I get a little check for like 300 and something dollars for my books or whatever sold on Amazon. I want to say shout out to everybody that support my book. And of course, y'all know I got Dr. Maya stuff right here on my computer. I'll never take it off. I got the Mel Trek here. <laughs> I, got the, I got the Mel Trek one. I got the Mel Trek okay. two. And I got this right here. I got all, all the, the color, stuff, all the coloring color books. <laughs> so go support her, man. Meltrek, man. Let's Google it. Let's Google. You don't even need no website. Let's Google it and it'll pop up. Yeah, Meltrek is Mel Trek putting in work. Hey, I want you to tell everybody, right? How many takes did Garfield take to make his scenes? Tell everybody the truth. Take it, right take it off now. the screen. Take us off the screen. Take us tell, off the screen. Tell everybody the truth right now. When Garfield Jones, no, you were good. Ball, you, you did. And you you did, said, "Let's you go did, in the like, studio and record." How many takes did it take for me to do stuff? Just tell them. Like, like one or two. That was it. You were done. I was one a natural. Two. I was a natural. She's like, "This who's this dude? I ain't got a coach him." It was. And good. then I'm telling her, "I want to do that over." When I told her I got to do stuff over, you know, I got this right here. I got it, it was right good. here. You did a you, know you did a wonderful job, and I can't I can't wait for the people to see it. So I'm, but it just gotta be right, and so that's why I haven't released it yet because I want to make sure that it's 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 the way we want it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's gonna come out. It's gonna be very powerful, very powerful. And I do want to bring you down, brother Garfield, because I'm gonna rent out. Uh, there's a black movie theater mm -hmm. down here um, called Next Act, Next Act Cinema in Baltimore. And so I'm going to do a premiere there and bring all of the people who did the voiceovers there. And so it's going to be a really big premiere and we're going to do the red carpet thing and all that good stuff. So you'll be down in Baltimore in the next month or so. All, all right, right. So make no sure problem. you plan for no it. No problem, man. <laughs> Your manga slate is funny. You say you, you know, you one take G, not one take home. <laughs> 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 oh man. Hey, Dr. Mayat is a gift to us family. Please check out her um what do you call it her youtube channel and her 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 cash app whatever your cash app i put, I put it i put it in the chat brother golf so you can put it right in the private it. chat i put oh, that the private in, chat. okay my yeah bad. i put it in the private chat and i'm gonna also put links to the programs just in case so you can show it on the on the screen all right so this is her cash app family Give her some love, show her some love for coming on, taking the time out of her busy schedule. She's a movie director, movie star all over the place. <laughs> you know, she's doing the damn thing, man. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud to be in her presence. And you're going to go down in history, man. When you, when you talk about people like um, Dr. – what's her name again? Um, that wrote the, the, the ISIS papers, Dr. Francisco S. Welsing. You are in league with the greats. I'm telling you. You're in league with the greats, and I'm telling you, Y'all gonna say 50 years from now, y'all gonna be like, yeah, there was this sister named Dr. Mayat, man. And they should have support. Nope, we gonna support <laughs> her now. Don't say you should have. You gonna support her right now. Cause this is greatness in our eyes. I would need to acknowledge it, man. I love her. I love, love this you, sister to death. Sean P, what up? What up, Sean P? You coming in by shaking my head. What are you what are you shaking your head about now? You coming in here to start show. Love you too, brother Garfield. And I just want to shout out to everybody, you know, people like, you know, I see Bob I mean in the chat room. I saw Sister Juju. I saw Dr. Craig Samuels. I always called them my audience family. So the Queen Mothers, a lot of them were in the building. So I just appreciate um, all of those, those brothers and sisters 
um, that uh, that do support me. I don't and I don't take that lightly, Brother Garfield, because I believe that people do things for you because they want to. Nobody owes you anything. Mm -hmm. And so when people send kind words, when someone sends five dollars, when someone just logs in and watches a video of mine, I do want to let you all know that I am. Um, grateful. I am extremely grateful, grateful for your support. And however you support me, I am truly, truly grateful for your support. And so thank you, Brother Garfield, again, for opening up your platform to me. I do want to come back. I appreciate all the work that you're doing. And uh, peace and black power to you, brother. All right. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you, man. No much problem, love and much respect. Much love. All right, peace ladies and gentlemen, did the aliens build the pyramids? Dr. Mayat responds to Billy Carson's claim. I want to give a shout out to um, Baba Amin. He's not on my channel, but he's on Dr. Mayat because she's broadcasting at the same time. I know Napa and Dulcinea got a debate coming up. I don't have the flyer to put up. Um, also, if Sean is available next week, um, Sean will be doing a review of um, Dane Calloway's um research his book and talk about some of the information regarding the eyeballs so for the month of november i'm actually going to be doing some research on the rastafarian movement according as far as the american link and some of the good things and the bad things that with selassie and all that stuff i'm gonna put that together because that's going to be a part of the book and the documentary the good the bad and the ugly with the hebrew israelites the, the hebrew israelites have a lot of positives that we don't talk about rob on touched on it we're going to put it in book form. As a matter of fact, I should let Rob on do that whole chapter of the book. That's what I should have did. Let me get lazy for a minute. All right. Don't forget to send her a cash app. Cash app. Get that cash app in here for Dr. Maya. And we're going to do what we're going to do. Shout out to Baba Imhotep, who that is. Shout out to Karak Yasharal in the building. Peace and love to that sister queen right there. Thank you for supporting. Bayesian Melanin. Peace and love to you. Do your thing. Much love, respect. Send me an email. Maybe you could come on and bring some information regarding Selassie on the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right? I'm telling my kids, Suge Knight built the pyramid. You funny, bro. All right, family. So, hey, much love, much respect. Tune in tomorrow. We're going to do a show about um, did um, are the Egyptians today the same Egyptians from the past. The ancient Egyptians are the same. Are the Egyptians today the Egyptians from the past? All right. Dr. Mayad is a beast. And we need to recognize and support her in any way, shape, or form. Peace and love, family. Much love and respect. And I'm out of here. Thank you for tuning in. Any announcement? Let me know in the chat. Any announcements? Oh, I got another announcement. I got to do conscious genuity. And I got to do Melchick 365. And I got to do Asa for camp. So let me show these on the screen real quick. And this is um Dr. Mayad putting in work. I want everybody to pay attention to all that I'm about to share before I go. All right. Don't forget. Sheffrin. <laughs> Sheffrin is a piece of work, boy. I tell you. Piece of work. All right. So this is the Asa for camp training camp. Check it out. Asaforcamp.com. All right. There you find out a lot of stuff regarding training and all that type of stuff. Career development, critical thinking, different things, discipline. So that's one thing I want I gotta put out there. Aside for camp.com. Then I gotta I'm gonna put all of this in the chat so people could see it anyway. All right. Then we have Edamine Productions. All right, learning our history 365, her books, where you could find her books and everything. Beautiful. All right. And then we have Conscious Ingenuity. Hope I said it right. Hope my Jamaican accent ain't in the way. I'm going to put all these links in the chat so y'all could check it out. Conscious Ingenuity programs. I'm telling you, she's doing a lot, family. A lot. She is doing a lot. Don't forget to send her a cash app and show some love. And she is one of the, I'm telling you, family, one of the greatest Top five dinner alive in the community. Reggie will debate you, smash one Garfield. Please. Reggie, Reggie ain't going to debate nothing. All right. So peace and love, family. We out of here. Let me put these in the in the chat. Hold on one second. Did the aliens build the pyramid? Let me edit the video. 
put all the links in the chat so that everybody could have it. That's one. Edamine Productions with all our books and stuff. You need to get Meltric for the kids. Where is it at? Put all of them in the chat. And then we have Conscious Ingenuity. Wow. She doing so much, man. I don't know how she made time for me, but I feel special. I got her. All right. Let me get her. All right. And then we out of here. Any more questions or anything anybody wants to ask, let me know. All right, cool. So that's saved. Yeah, if you want to see content on West Africa, go to the Masi Warrior Clan, the Hunter Gatherer, Sean, going to hold you now. <laughs> oh, man. Peace and love, family. We out of here. One minute, one, one minute Garfield. Hate Egypt, but he has love for Dr. Maya. Oh, man. So she's not, but she's not an Egyptomania though. So she's not. Shout out to Sister Karak in the building. All right. Israelite support Garfield, man. I got my man Sheffrin out of Baltimore. And let me see who else. My brother, Dr. Craig Samuels, doing the damn thing. Peace and love to you, big bro. Sheffrin said, I want to debate. I only want to debate one person right now. Well, actually, we're trying to finalize this debate with Gorilla Hebrew and Rawborn and um, Tazariok and this um, this scholar about the Trinity. And um, I'm supposed to debate Priest Daniela, but that got pushed to the side for whatever reason. And um, I'm probably going to do Lee Fleming or Lee Cummings or whatever his name is. All right. Peace and love, family. We're out of here. Thank you so much for listening. Peace and love. This is This is your brother, Garfield, and I'm out.